This video we will talk about our uh, finding equivalence point by measuring change of pH and change of temperature. So uh, in the previous video we talked about using indicator to locate the equivalence point. This video we will talk about changing pH of the mixture and also changing temperature can also indicate the equivalence point. First, we're going to have a look of uh, measuring the change in pH, okay? So this time, okay, instead we are not using conical flask, instead we are using a beaker. Uh, in the beaker, okay, we have a magnetic stirring bar. This magnetic stirring bar will be attracted by the magnetic stirrer downstairs, okay? And then they will just uh, making the stirring bar to spin, so that will just create a swirl, okay, inside the solutions. So in this case, you don't need to or swell the solutions to mix the acid and alkaline together. Or instead of using indicator, you can see that okay, we have used a pH meter connecting to uh, we have a electrode of pH meter connecting to a pH meter. So we can measure the uh, pH change we during the process. As we are having acid in the beaker, okay, so therefore at the very beginning you can start uh, you can see that the pH will start at or uh, lower than seven okay this time will be one okay so as time goes by you add the alkaline into the solutions the ph will go up okay so bit by bit okay you'll find that um the ph okay will then go up and then when it close to equivalence point okay the ph will go sharply okay will increase sharply and then passing seven and then go up to like in this case will be almost 12 okay and then just go like this way so this will be the ph curve and where the equivalence point happened okay it will be the middle part okay of this vertical part okay so that will be the ph okay ph7 in this case okay that will be the point that or uh, where the neutralization happened just one thing about the SPA skill okay have to remind you that will be in the burette part okay the tube of the burette this is the tube of the burette Okay, when we draw it, okay, the tube of the burette, this part, okay, well, sometimes we may uh, not fill it uh, properly, so therefore there may be a bubbles in the jet. If you have a bubble in the jet, then, okay, there will be a problem, because when you're doing the titration, these bubbles, it may be pushed it out. If the bubble pushes out this empty space okay we required extra titrants okay to fill the space if you have extra extra titrant fill the space but these titrants okay suppose the titrants here have to go to the analyte but they are not going to the analyte instead they are filling this area so therefore you'll find that okay the volume used this volume of titrant used is not equal to the titrants okay, added in the analyte. So you'll find that okay, the results okay, of the titration will be inaccurate. To be precise, you'll find that the calculated molarity of analyte will be higher than the real one. Why it have to be higher than the real one? Because the analyte, maybe you require 10 cm cube of titrants to neutralize it. However, in this case, okay, some of the titrant added okay, are needed okay, to fill the air bubbles. Then in that case, okay, maybe you have like 12 cm cube of titrant needed. Okay, say for example, 12 cm cube of NaOH, this one is 10 cm of NaOH. At the beginning, okay, we just need 10. But now it seems that we have added 12 cm cube NaOH into it. Then we will assume the, um, the exit in the analyte, say for example, the HCl, okay, will be more than the expected one okay so that's why okay we shouldn't have any air bubbles in the jet okay so how to remove the bubble in the jet okay you can check this qr code and have a look of it other than measuring the ph change okay we can also observe the temperature change in the process to see or to find out the equivalence point as you all know that okay neutralization is an exothermic reaction so therefore in the process when we mix acid and alkaline together, the temperature should be going up, okay? So when we add NaOH into the HCl, we will expect the temperature, the th or reading of the thermometer will go up, okay? So in this setup, you can find that we have used cotton wool, beaker, and expanded polysyrene. Mainly the expanded polysyrene and cotton wool we use here is uh, because they are 
poor heat conductor. Remember, you must mention the word heat right here, okay? Because poor conductor, it can be talking about electricity, okay? So this in the process, okay, it helps to reduce the heat loss to the surrounding. Remember, it have to be reduced heat loss to surrounding, but not prevent heat loss to surrounding because you can never prevent heat loss to surroundings, okay? So the NaOH add into it, it can be using a, you can using a syringe to help. If we use a syringe to help, then we can measure the volume okay, of NaOH used. So you can see that, okay, if we add the NaOH into the solutions, into the exit, okay, of volume, cm cube by cm cube. So bit by bit, you'll find that, okay, the temperature will go up. The more NaOH you add into it, the temperature will keep on going until there is a point, okay, that is the highest point. That will be the equivalence point. At this point, you add all the HCl have been neutralized by the NaOH. Beyond this, if you add extra NaOH into it, you will find that the temperature will not keep on going up because no more neutralizations right there and no more exothermic reaction. You add extra chemical or extra solution into the setup, you are just or cooling down the mixture, okay? So therefore, you'll find it after the equivalent spawn, the extra NaOH add into it, will just result in cooling down the mixture. The temperature will just drop in. So basically, okay, the first part from A to E, temperature rising because neutralization is an exothermic reaction. Heat is given out, so therefore the temperature will rise, okay? And E, this point is an equivalence point. This point means that all HCl has been reacted with the NaOH. So at this point, beyond this point, okay, extra NaOH, NaOH added in it, okay, addition of excess NaOH will not give out heat, but cool the mixture, okay? So uh, this part, okay, you need to know how to explain the temperature change from A to E and also from E to B. So this one and this one is very important. So uh, finding the highest temperatures, highest uh, temperatures, it is not only just like, it is not like uh, circles, the highest point that is, okay? No, okay? The method that we're using is called our uh, extrapolation method, okay? So right here, what you need to do, okay, is using a ruler, you have, have a ruler, Okay, and then you will select the point, okay, going up this part. You try to draw a best fit line here, and then you draw the best fit line here, okay, and then you go to find the highest point. So basically, you need to draw lines like this. Give some time. Oh, for example, you have a line like this way, okay, while the other lines, okay, will be going this way. So you'll find at the highest points it will be higher than the highest, highest points right there, okay? The interaction should be the interaction higher than the highest point, okay? So this one, okay, you're going down, okay, and you can find out, okay, better you use a ruler, okay, then you'll find out how much volume of exit, in this case, we have to use in order to uh, uh, reach the, uh, reach the uh, equivalence point for that, okay? So the equivalence point, equivalence point that will be the intersections at this point okay so uh, like this next uh, we can have a look of class practice 19.5 okay so in this case okay we have 25 cm curve NaOH of unknown concentrated solutions put into polystyrene cup so we have a NaOH putting here okay and then we're going to add 1 m H2SO4 into the uh, into the NaOH, okay? Each time we have add 5 cm cube, okay? So uh, upon uh, each addition of sulfur acid, we have measured the temperature change. So actually we have a thermometer right there. Okay, we have a thermometer right there. So again, what we need to do, okay, we have a extrapolations method, okay? So we're gonna find the highest points by drawing two best fit line, one here, the other one, okay, it will be like this. Best fit line. Uh, wait for what? 
okay so by doing salts okay you can find out the highest point right here and then you're going to okay draw a vertical line like this okay so uh basically okay uh, you'll find that the volume of hcl required to neutralize all the NaOH in it is not exactly 15, okay, instead of like 16 cm cube, okay. So this is how we do the, uh, finding the highest point, okay, in a temperature volume type of uh, temperature volume graph, okay. So this one we can echo to this answer. Explain A, okay, why the experiment was performed in polystyrene cup. Remember, polystyrene cup is a or poor heat conductor remember heat is very important poor heat conductor so it can reduce heat loss to surrounding okay poor conductor of heat reduce heat loss to surrounding okay so in this case okay do we need an indicator okay of course no okay because we're measuring the temperature the highest point okay the highest point of the temperature it can reach okay that will be the equivalence point okay the temperature maximum temperature it is the equivalence point okay so to summarize this video, okay, we learned that okay, other than using indicator, we can also measure the change in pH, measure the change in pH, or measure the change in temperature of the mixture. We can also find the equivalence point. For change in pH, okay, all this pH increase, you're gonna find the middle point okay, of that. That will be equals to the equivalence point. While for measure the change in temperature, we can use extrapolation method. The setup, okay, would look like this. Okay, we have the expanded polystyrene cup and also cotton wool, which reduce the heat loss to surrounding. And the HCl right there. When we add NaOH, we can use a syringe to control the volume of NaOH added in it. You can use a syringe. Actually, you can also use a burette. Okay, actually, both of them is all right. Okay, so, um... If we add NaOH, okay, you will find that the temperature in the first part, okay, will go in up because, okay, the keyword will be the neutralization is exothermic. So heat is given out. That's why temperature will rising, okay. And the maximum temperature at that point, that will be the equivalence point. That's why we don't need an indicator. But if you add excess NaOH in this case, okay, excess NaOH, it won't increase the temperature anymore. Instead, it will only cool the mixture. So therefore, you find that temperature will first go up and then it will go down. Extrapolation method means that, okay, you need to draw two best fit line, okay. So, or uh, with the intersection of these two best fit line, you will then find the highest point, okay. In this case, okay, we'll have this one, okay, and then we'll have another best fit line like this. Okay, we'll have another best fit line like this. So therefore, uh, for this highest point, for this highest point, we can find that how much volume of exit have to add in order to have the neutralization. Okay, so that's all for this video. Bye-bye.